de sopa e hoje nós estamos aqui na casa da Liz Marie e viemos contar para vocês algumas novidades que estão acontecendo no de sopa, inclusive o um novo quadro chamado Expresso que veio para mostrar para vocês algumas diferentes formas de se expressar e vamos estar entrevistando várias pessoas que lidam com esse tipo de arte com dança, teatro, cinema, enfim, fiquem ligados. E no final do programa eu vou estar entrevistando o meu marido, que é vocalista do Almost Underground, daqui de Curitiba, mas também a Lisa vai estar contando um pouquinho sobre algumas palavras que Deus tem colocado nos nossos corações, tá bom? Então não percam! Eu sou Oliveira, vocalista da banda Almost Underground e você está vendo o Expresso aqui no The Sofa. Bom, escolher um nome para uma banda é uma coisa importante, normalmente é uma coisa bem difícil de fazer também. É, o nome do Almost Underground, na verdade, veio... O pessoal estava jogando videogame, aquele jogo chamado Rock Band, e... Ah, tinha que escolher um nome para a banda no jogo e uh, eles colocaram um random e aí uh, o próprio jogo escolheu um nome Almost Underground e todo mundo pensou, nossa que nome legal para uma banda e foi mais ou menos assim, não teve uma coisa, ah tem que ser uma coisa super especial, não uh, eu já tive esse processo no passado e queria evitar isso, então <risos> o pessoal foi bem fácil escolher. Bom, eu conheci o Almost Underground através do vídeo na verdade, foi o Felipe que me apresentou, o Lucas e a Ana, e hoje a gente trabalha junto, claro, na banda. Quem começou o Almost Underground mesmo foram eles, foi o Felipe, a Ana e o Lucas juntos. Eu pude, um pouquinho mais tarde, ver um single deles, que era a My Call, que hoje está no nosso EP também, a gente regravou. E eu vi o vídeo no YouTube e eu falei, cara, esse projeto é muito bom. E eu tinha recentemente saído da minha, da minha outra banda e eu entrei em contato com o Lucas falando Lucas, se você precisar de um vocal, uma voz ou alguma coisa assim, eu tô aí E a gente acabou conversando e é, eu gostei muito do projeto e a gente tá junto desde então Mais tarde veio o Felipe Mata, né, o nosso baixista Ele veio lá de Floripa e daí tava aqui em Curitiba, assim, músico muito bom e é, tava sem banda e tal e, Uh, através do nosso canal do YouTube, uh, desculpa, do Facebook, ele, ele, ele pôde ver a nossa mensagem lá, que a gente estava precisando de baixista, ele veio fazer uma audição com a gente, a gente gostou do cara e está com a gente até hoje, é uma peça fundamental na nossa banda. E depois chegou o nosso Augusto, chegou chegando, porque é, é uma parte essencial agora para a nossa banda, é, o Augusto, é uma alegria ter ele, é o mais novinho na banda, mas é, mergulhou mesmo no projeto, tá com a gente e eu sou muito feliz por isso. A gravação das músicas do Almost Underground se dá no nosso home studio, é, na casa do Lucas, o baterista, ele tem, ele tem um home studio é, e a gente é, normalmente tá lá nos finais de semana, meio de semana e é bem legal, eu gosto muito de estar tá lá. É um lugar apertadinho, não é um home studio grande, mas a gente, a gente se enfia lá, lá em cinco e ficamos gravando às vezes a madrugada toda. É o Lucas que produz as músicas também, ele que mixa, ele que, ele que vê tudo. Então é, eu tenho que agradecer pelo cara e é uma peça chave aí para que as músicas do Almost Underground saiam é, filé para a galera estar tá ouvindo. É um, som, um som de qualidade, um som a nível internacional, que é o que o pessoal tem dito do nosso som, graças a Deus. Nossa meta agora é fazer com que o nosso som seja conhecido. É, as pessoas têm que saber que o Almost Underground existe, é, mais uma banda que está aí. É, então a gente, é, essa é a meta, a gente gravou agora no EP para que as pessoas conheçam o som que a gente faz e que a gente está aí na praça. Então essa é a meta inicial, a meta inicial que eles conheçam é, o que a gente está fazendo, o nosso trabalho e como é o som do Almost Underground. Uh, no momento uh, a gente saía fazendo shows, mas por causa de um problema a gente não está não podendo fazer. O nosso guitarrista sofreu um acidente, o uh, taxista furou o sinal e, e acabou batendo nele, ele estava de moto. Então ele teve que passar por algumas cirurgias e tal, e a gente está dando todo o tempo para o Guto se recuperar. E o Guto, se você estiver assistindo, força, cara. Tá? Plano a longo 
prazo é que a gente possa é, viver de música, claro, eu acho que é o que toda a banda quer, é, colocar o som lá fora, eu espero que é, no nosso caminho tenha algum produtor que, que escute o nosso som e possa falar, olha, eu quero investir nesses caras porque o som é bom, os caras são bons, o trabalho é sério. Eu vejo muita reclamação de músicos consagrados na internet, músicos brasileiros que investiram em fazer é, festivais nacionais aqui, com bandas, apenas com bandas nacionais, bandas boas, mas o pessoal não aparece. Quando é banda gringa, daí os, daí os caras vêm. É, isso me deixa triste, muito triste. Eu conheço muita banda boa que faz música própria, é, seja em português, inglês, seja, sei lá, de qualquer estilo que for. É, eu, acho que, eu acho que a gente tem que prestigiar a música brasileira, sim, é, quando ela for de qualidade. Ter ido lá pra fora me influenciou muito, sim, ter viajado bastante é, me influenciou. É, vamos dizer assim, influência de vida foi a minha viagem, a minha tour pela América Latina, com a minha outra banda. É, foi uma experiência de vida maravilhosa. Agora, como experiência, é, como músico, vamos dizer assim, o que me influenciou muito foi ter ido para os Estados Unidos agora em 2011, tocar no Cornerstone Festival lá, um festival bem importante nos Estados Unidos. É, tivemos a oportunidade de tocar com bandas como P.O.D. ou Brian Head Welch, cara que era do Korn. E você tá lá e você vê o nível de profissionalismo desses caras, é, como eles fazem a música deles, é um, é um nível muito alto lá fora. E poder trazer isso comigo é, me influenciou muito, sim. É, saber que agora eu tenho que trabalhar ainda mais, eu tenho que é, fazer melhor, é, isso com certeza vai ajudar muito na minha carreira e na minha vida. É, e o Almost Underground, é, com certeza, é, eu espero que a gente chegue é, ao nível desses caras um dia. Né? Sonhar é bom, né? E, mas sim, com certeza, cada viagem que eu fiz me influenciou muito, seja as viagens aqui dentro do país também. É, eu pude conhecer várias bandas boas, várias coisas é, diferentes acontecendo é, por todo o país. Então, é, você sempre traz um pouquinho disso na tua bagagem. Assim, de cada lugar que você vai, você traz um pouquinho. Se você puder somar essas coisas no final, com certeza você vai ser uma pessoa melhor. Não só um músico melhor, mas uma pessoa melhor. Bom, para conhecer um pouquinho mais sobre o Almost Underground, você pode acessar a nossa página no Facebook. Uh, só digitar lá no Sandegram, provavelmente é a única coisa que tem com esse nome. Uh, a gente tem alguns, alguns uh, links em outros websites, por exemplo, tem o Trama Virtual aqui no Brasil, uh, nossas músicas lá para você ouvir, para você baixar. Uh, nós temos também uh, na Amazon MP3, no iTunes, então você pode entrar lá, você pode comprar a nossa música, você pode ajudar o Almost Underground também. Uh, e a gente tem um canal no YouTube. A gente está produzindo alguns vídeos, colocando lá devagarinho e se Deus quiser um clipe logo, logo. Uh, e o nosso site é almostonthegrand.com. Visite uh, e curta a nossa página. To share something very personal with you, just uh, a story of my life, and uh, I really felt like the Lord wanted to bring some healing to uh, moms and dads out there, um, even though there were many other things that I would want to share with you guys. So when my husband and I were about two years married, I became pregnant. I went to my usual uh, checkup, you know, to check the baby's heartbeat, and it's a very normal thing when you're pregnant. Um, but unfortunately, the doctor could not find the baby's heartbeat and had to tell me that uh, we lost our baby. You are so excited, of course. It's your first child, and in your mind, you're thinking about all the things that, you know, are going to happen, and all of a sudden it gets cut short. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's a very strange feeling. And after this appointment, I had to tell my husband, of course, that, hey, I'm sorry, we lost the, the baby. And that was really, uh, really hard for him to deal with. Um, we had decided that even though the, the doctor had said, listen, two days from now we can do a DNC, we can remove the baby, My husband and I really wanted to press in and, and uh, you know, pray over our baby and, and commend life to our baby. And so we had gotten our friends together and we had prayed. And for six weeks we were really, um, you know, really wanting this baby to live. But unfortunately we had a natural uh, miscarriage after that. That was very hard for my husband. It was the first time that he had cried. It was amazing because we felt 
people's prayers and we it was like it kept us going and, and we felt like we could keep living even though a, our dream was shattered. And my husband and I had decided that even though we had lost our baby, we were not going to become bitter and, and angry at God. And, um, and really people's prayers helped us to push through you know, the pain of what happened. And in my second year of ministry school, we had gotten lots of people, new people of course, and so we had made a lot of friends there. And all of a sudden, all of my friends got pregnant. All three of them got pregnant before me. And I was still, you know, going through like the emotions of not being pregnant and everything. And it was very hard for me. And my friends were super, super great, super sweet about, you know, because they knew what happened. But I really felt from the Lord to start celebrating them instead of, of going, looking at my life and going, why, why, why? Mm -hmm. And so what I did, especially for my first friend who got pregnant, is I... Um, I, I took her to get her hair cut, you know, I took her to take photos of her belly and, and bought, bought her some new clothes and, you know, all these things. I did everything I could to celebrate her pregnancy and, and this time of her life and um, she was a real sport because, you know, <laughs> I dragged her everywhere and I think she enjoyed it, I hope so. <laughs> and then everybody else got pregnant and in that season it was very hard for me and I, I had to fight the thoughts of how come they're pregnant and I'm not? How come? They have healthy babies, and I don't. But I, I made it, and I, and I, and I celebrated with them, and, and everything worked out well. And they have beautiful babies that you know are all grown up now, you know, probably about two years old, you know. But it's really good. Right after that, uh, my husband and I moved to Brazil, and we finally got pregnant. <laughs> it was very great. Yeah, we were very excited, and my baby was born in March of 2011. And she's not here right now, otherwise I would, you know, show her off to you guys. But um, she's such a joy, and, and it's just, having a baby is, is, a, real, is a real blessing. Yeah, she's a blessing. She is a blessing. So right after just having this miscarriage, I had just got this righteous anger against miscarriage. And, um, you know, every time it ha it, somebody's going through that, I just, I, I don't like it, and I, and I don't want to allow it. And so... We have fought for babies, and so we've won some babies, and we've lost some babies. But we're going to keep fighting, because I really believe that children are a blessing from God. And I wanted to share you a story from my, my friend. I got pregnant and lost her first baby. And with the second baby, um, she had written to me and said, listen, things are not going well. So the first thing that happened was the baby was not inside the womb. And so they were saying that they had, the doctor wanted to remove the baby. So they prayed, Lord, move the baby into the womb. And when they had the, the ultrasound to see what was happening, the baby had moved from outside of the womb into the womb. Okay, now this was a miracle that nobody, the doctors were totally dumbfounded. They couldn't believe it. And one after the other, every time that, that like, she was having a lot of bleeding and, and it seemed like her body was rejecting the pregnancy, her body was opening up and the baby was going to, they were saying, you're having a miscarriage. Her and her husband were just like, no, we're, we don't believe that. We're going to believe for our baby. And up to the point where this baby was born, like her cord was around her neck and around her arm, um, there was just so much against this baby to take this baby's life. And we were just like, we are not having this. <laughs> I remember closing my door and just shouting to the enemy, you are not having this baby. I, I, I'm not going to allow it. And Lord, just yeah. bless this baby. We speak a life over this baby. And this baby is the most beautiful little thing Aww. that you can imagine. This dark hair, you know, tons of oh, hair. Okay. And um, just so beautiful. And so we are s celebrating her life. Um, another a really cool testimony happened was one of our conferences. A woman had had two miscarriages already. She was pregnant at our conference. And we were not even praying for people. I think this was during worship. She was she was, felt the baby had gone down the day before and she started feeling lots of cramping and things. And during worship, in this atmosphere where we were praying for healing and worshiping the Lord, she actually felt the baby move back up <gasps> into her this belly. So this is really cool. So we know that God can heal our babies. And so um, this is what I want to talk to you guys about. I want to speak to those of you who have had miscarriages before or you're busy having one. For those of you who've lost your children who were born already or had stillbirths, um, for those of you who've been wanting to be pregnant for so many years and there, there are difficulties that are keeping you from being pregnant, and even those of you who have made 
inner vows and judgments that said, you know, I have been through so much pain as a child. Maybe you have, you know, something happened really bad to you. And you were saying, I will never bring a child into the world because of that. But really, truly, you have a desire to have kids. I just wanted to pray with all of you guys today because we serve such an incredible powerful God who can do incredible miracles and so let's just pray together um, for God to to just touch you where you are right now and, and what you need right now okay so father we we ask right now for every person in their need you know the moms and dads who've lost babies you've known the moms and dads who have miscarriages you know the pain that they're in right now just that loneliness of the dream that shattered God and Father, for those who've made judgments that said, I will never, I don't want to bring children in this world, but really their heart desires to have kids and those who have problems with getting pregnant. Father of heaven, we just pray right now for um, your kingdom to come and your will to be done in their lives. We ask for miracles for those who cannot get pregnant. For whatever reason, the doctors have spoken over their lives that they can't. We break those, those curses over them. And we just thank you for the miracles that will come in people's lives. For the babies that will be born. For those um, who are having miscarriages that the bleeding will stop. The baby will go back into the womb. We speak to the bodies to just receive this pregnancy in Jesus' name. And Lord, we ask just for your arms to come around those who have lost their children prematurely. Um, who have lost... Um, older children, God, and um, we ask, Father God, that you will bring hope back to them. You will restore them in their pain. God, that you will um, bring people around them that will just so speak into that pain, that problem there in their heart, God, that you will lift them up in prayer, God, just put people around them to pray, because I know how the prayer keeps you going, it keeps you um, having hope and having peace. And so we thank you, God, for what you're doing in people's lives today, in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for being a part of this program. And uh, we want you to write us, please. We, we really enjoy hearing from you. So if you have a miracle that's happened in your life because of uh, our prayer that we pray today, please write me at Lisa Marie V, no, oh, I'm sorry, Lisa Marie at EscolaJacura.com. I'm sorry about that. And um, we really want to hear your story, even if you want to sh share your pictures with us. And, and if you give us permission, we will want to share that with the world and to share what God has done for you. Please. Be back soon on our next episode. Ciao. Ciao. I felt like the Lord showed me that there's somebody who might have hurt themselves. Um, I think that you either punched through a glass or something. Um, you put your hand through glass and you have hurt this part of your arm. And so I just want to pray for you real quick for uh, God to heal you. So Lord, I thank you that there is no pain in heaven. And so right now I ask that your kingdom come and your will be done in this person's body. And I ask right now, Lord God, that you will just heal their hand and their wrist, God. And I command every pain to leave in Jesus' name. Amen.